please stand to worship with us? There's nothing worth more that could ever come close. Nothing can compare. You're our living hope. Your presence, Lord. I've tasted and seen of the sweetest of loves when my heart becomes free and my shame is undone your precious lord holy spirit you are welcome here come flood this place and fill the atmosphere your glory god is what our hearts long for to be overcome by your presence lord. your presence lord. there's nothing worth more that could ever come close nothing can compare you're our living hope your precious Lord I've tasted and seen of the sweetest of love when my heart becomes free and my shame is undone your presence lord holy spirit you are welcome here from flood this place and fill the your glory, God, is what our hearts long for, to be overcome by your presence, Lord. Your presence, Lord. Let us become more aware of your presence let us experience the glory of your goodness let us become more aware of your presence let us experience the glory of your goodness let us become more aware of your presence let us experience the glory of your goodness let us become more aware of your presence let us experience the glory of your goodness Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Come fly this place and fill the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for. To be overcome by your presence, Lord. Good morning, everybody. How are we? Good. 
Did Devaney just rock that song or what? Thank you, Devaney. And the entire worship team. You were back up for Dev. There you go. Yep. As you can tell, our worship team, many of them are actually on vacation. Um, but we are so thankful for the ones that are here, and they just do an awesome job all the time. So we're very thankful for that. Uh, this morning, I just want to share with you a couple announcements. Uh, all right, more than a couple. Um, first and foremost, happy Father's Day to all the dads out there. Um, yes, absolutely. <laughs> Father's Day can be a tough day um, because there's people that can't be dads, that want to be dads. There's people that had dads that didn't do the role of dad very well. And then there's the dads that have passed on, and we miss them greatly. So we have lots of different things that go on. And um, Father's Day, like Mother's Day, can, can be many different things. What? Oh, yeah, he, don't, he doesn't care. He's all good. Okay, so Father's Day. With that being said, we have a gift for each and every one of you in a basket right up there and a basket over by this offering box on the stool, there are gifts for the dads. So be sure before you leave church today to grab one of those. Look at them because there are, uh, many are different. So uh, be sure to take a peek at those and uh, be sure to take one with you. Also, um, offering, we have the two offering boxes here. Those of you joining us online, we thank you for choosing to worship with us. And you can also either mail or you can do uh, PayPal as well. And again, we thank everybody for supporting the ministry of the church, family, and faith. And we're very thankful for everyone taking part in that. You have announcement sheets in the back of the chairs in front of you or on the chair. Um, pretty much all the same as far as that goes for this month as well. Junior high mission trip. Everybody came home alive. So that's the upside. Can't say that everybody is feeling good physically. Um, I know there is exhaustion that happened, but a lot got done. Were you going to add to that? I'm older now. <laughs> So uh, our group, there was five different groups for the junior high mission trip. It was local. We did all local work. So we were in Boscobel, Mount Hope, um, Linksville, Woodman, and two Boscobels. Oh, no, Grant, uh, Crawford County Fairgrounds. So we had five locations. Ours was the absolute di most difficult. And I will say, I, after seeing pictures from the other groups, I was clearly the slave driver because other kids got to play and they had like a slide on cardboard and I just kept saying, come on, you guys, let's get this done. Let's get this done. Um, but we had fun in the meantime and truly our mission was really to minister to the owner of the property, his wife, and he, um, he was not really a believer and I think he felt Jesus Christ's love there that the, that entire time we were there. So that was our big mission, um, and a lot of other things got done too. So thank you, thank you, thank you for all the prayers for Junior High Mission. Also, Senior High will be leaving this Saturday, so that's a huge thing. Um, excitement abounds for that. And uh, as I've said, that trip shifted two weeks ago, literally, from going to Omaha, Nebraska, to going to Grand, Rap Grand Rapids, Michigan. And it all just fell into place with a whole lot of work, but it worked. And that's clearly where God wants them all to go. So um, they will be leaving on Saturday, so please pray for that group as well. Um, other announcements. Some Adneys are already gone, so Sherry and Blake have the back room. They'll do amazing back there. Um, so please pray for their travels. And then Jeff and I are leaving tomorrow bright and early to go to Destin, Florida, where it will be 956 degrees. Um, <laughs> but we're going down to see our son. So uh, we will be back later on Friday. So um, that is where we will be. So if something comes up, you can still reach out to me. Sherry will hold the fort down. Um, Courtney will hold the hotel fort down. And everybody will be fine. So also, Life Fest, if you are not getting message, messenger information through Messenger, please see Sherry or I. Make sure that we're all communicating on that group so we know what's going on. 
um, that's right around the corner and pretty excited for that. Um, additionally, we have a mission moment information that I want to share with you guys. Can I hand that to you, Brooklyn? Thank you. There's two sign-up sheets on there. One is for volunteering for Vacation Bible School. You want, I was going to say, girls, you're going to let that pass up? Volunteering for Vacation Bible School is one of the sign-up sheets. The other one is for cookies, um, bars, things like that for swim meets that are happening in Boscobel. And they are doing a concession stand at the swim meets. There's four dates that they're doing them and selling items for 50 cents. So whether it's a cookie, a bar, put two cookies in a Ziploc bag, a big bar, um, puppy chow, hint, hint for Riley on that one, um, snack mix, things like that. Something that people would buy for 50 cents. And then they're also looking for donations of bottled water um, so they can sell that as well. All of the money raised at this fundraiser at the swim meets is for Feed My Starving Children, as is the waffle sales that they have at the farmer's market on Saturday mornings in Boscobel. So that all goes also to Feed My Starving Children. And they need pancake mix. Any kind, doesn't matter what kind it is, but they need pancake mix. So if you are at the grocery store or whatever, um, see some pancake mix, feel free to drop it off here, and Joan will be sure to get it to Bruce. Um, so that will be very helpful as well. Again, all these things help so much with fundraising and making it all possible. Operation Christmas Child, we need, here's what we need for the next month and a half. Bar soap, so individually wrapped bar soap, standard size, washcloths, and wow gifts. Wow gifts being balls that they can pump up without a pumper, stuff like that. Um, Joan has a list of stores that are online that supports Operation Christmas Child as well. And then also monetary donations to ship the boxes because the boxes are $10 a piece. And our goal is 250 boxes. So that's a little bit of coinage that we need to ship off these boxes. And then lastly, another mission, which is the cutest darn mission and delish at that, is um, Happy Pasty Mission. This is Joan doing it herself. She is going to try to recruit some help. Um, but she has an awesome recipe for pasties. Pasties, if you don't know, are with a crust, and then there's beef, potato, and if you want onions, Sherry wants onions in hers all the time, and salt and pepper um, in them. She does cook them, so therefore you can freeze them. We have had success of freezing them up to six months. One for three fifty. I told her that was too cheap, um, but one for three fifty or three for ten. So if you are interested in pasties, please see Joan. She will hook you up. And um, there's also this information is all up on the announcement board as well. For that mission, again, all money that is raised from that goes towards missions, whether it's Operation Christmas Child, Feed My Starving Children. It goes towards missions. If you would like to donate potatoes, onions, lunch bags, gallon-sized Ziploc freezer bags, that would be very helpful as well. And you can see Joan for those as well. Aren't they so good? There you go. There's a testimony right there. Amazing pasties. So thank you. Thank you. Um, I think that's it. Do we have any other announcements? Abby's birthday was yesterday. That's pretty exciting. Happy birthday to Abby. All right. Nothing else. All right. We are going to go into our prayer list then, which um, I just want to say prayers work. We've seen it over and over and over again, right? Um, and there's some people in church that are really struggling with various things. And I just want to say, don't give up. God's got you. He knows the situation. And just keep on keeping on because it matters. And uh, God's got you. So here's what we have for our prayer list. Family dynamics, relationships, our government, and our country. Um, those that are dealing with deaths of friends and family of loved ones. And then also Linda Knight, past, and uh, her dear friends, we're all part of that, and uh, we lift them all up in prayer and thankful that she knows her Lord and Savior. 
Others that we want to lift up in prayer is Jackson's grandpa. Mark Maroney will be having hip surgery on the 23rd. Um, also praying for Ernie Gephardt or Ernest. Uh, that would be Jean and Tommy Ann Gephardt. It's Jean's dad. He is at end of life. Um, so please lift up that family in your prayers. Um, also, the uh, senior high mission trip coming up. Upcoming surgery for Matt. We want to pray for that. Friends and family with health issues. Um, we went and saw our, our baseball mom yesterday. That was a true blessing to be able to see her post-surgery, and she's doing great. So thank you for all of those prayers. Um, also, May and Paul Adney Sr. continued health issues. And then safe travels for the many people who are traveling here, there, and everywhere continues to go on with summertime as well. Um, celebrations, birthdays and anniversaries, and then, of course, our dads. And then Shannon, gonna, Shannon being a grandma to a little girl, that will be happening soon, so that's exciting. And Ava got her wish come true that it's a little girl. So, And we just want to continue today to focus on the dads and... Um, Minister, literally minister to them as well. Let's join our hearts together for a time of prayer. Father God, we thank you this morning for hearing our every prayer, knowing them before we even speak. Lord, we thank you for the love that you share, not just within these walls of this building, but the world is a mission field. And Lord, we thank you for the love and for all that that entails. God is love, therefore we too need to be loving and forgiving and grace-filled. Help us to be just that. And Lord, um, we pray for healing for the many people that we just read off, many others that we hold within our hearts. We pray for peace. And peace may be peace giving someone the ultimate comfort of death. Peace may be a relationship that is healed. It may be peace that we can only receive from you when our world is truly in chaos. Whatever it is, Father God, we give it all up to you, knowing that you hear every prayer. We continue to pray for rain, and some people are like, oh, that's silly. Why are you doing that? That's, it's, we pray for what we need. He knows our heart's desires. We are praying for rain. For if farmers are struggling to the depth that they are, the world, the U.S., will truly struggle as well. So, Lord, we do pray for rain and that Mother Nature would deliver that prayer request. Thank you, Father. We lift up some individual silent prayers to you during this time. We pray all of this in your name, Lord, as we join together for the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Also, I just wanted to remind everybody at home, we will be doing having communion, coming to the Lord's table. So please get your elements as well. And at this time, we have a video for all the dads.
And that is so true, isn't it, though? Let's stand and worship. so tired you don't know oh you had a fire outside campfire Is that for your sister's birthday no oh. 
Oh, got you. Your back hurts. Oh, man, we're getting old quick. Oh, my. All right, so this morning I have a question for all of you. In the kindest, most Christian way, tell me what your dad does the worst. What does your dad do the worst? Doesn't let us on the phone. Doesn't let you on the phone? That's an awesome dad. All right. What else does dad do the worst? It's a hard question, isn't it? All right, what's dad do the best? Farm, farm, wood. Anybody else? What dad does the best? Let their son and computer on the phone. Okay, so there's quickly we could see the difference between what dad does the worst, we really couldn't even come up with anything, and then what dad does the best. But here's the thing dads are a mix, just like the moms are the mix, right? Some moms are really, really good at what they do, and some moms not so much. Some dads are really good at what they do, and some dads not so much. And that's just what we all have to deal with in life. And we have to learn how to cope. So here's my thing this morning. No matter what kind of dads we have, even stepdad, real dad, whatever, however we want to say that, here's what we have to find ourselves doing. Listen carefully. We have to offer grace okay and that's not even just for dads that's for everybody we all fall short of the glory of God right so we need to offer grace we all mess up we all have bad days we all have really good days right we don't ever know what somebody else is going through so maybe it's somebody even in the grocery shopping line and they're just being rude and nasty right and then all of a sudden you're like rawr, rawr, rawr. right and then You'll remember, oh, I remember. I'm supposed to offer grace. Maybe they're just having a really bad day, right? So this morning, I just want to ask all of you on this Father's Day, not just about dads, but in our entire life, let's offer grace to each other. Can we do that? Yeah? What is grace? If we're going to offer it, what is it? Love. Yeah, that's part of it. What else? Forgiveness. Some slack. Right? Can we do that? All right. Any prayer requests? My grandpa died. He used to be a dad. Aww. All right. So grandpa that grandpas that have passed on. That's a very good prayer request. Thank you. Because my grand my dad and my grandpa are in heaven too. So yeah, let's do that. That's a great prayer request. Those of us that are me- missing our daddies today on Father's Day, that's Thank you, Oliver. All right, let's pray. Dear God, thank you for your love, showing us grace, and for helping us be more like you. And Lord, this morning, we remember those that have passed before us and are in heaven with you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, grab a treat, and actually, um, I need all of you right up here. You're going to sing. This is a song about uh, how you want to be like your dad. So give us just a second so we get everybody up here. You'll recognize this song. Yep, you'll know it right away. Just my boy and me With a happy meal in his booster seat Knowing that he couldn't have the toy Till his nuggets were gone A green traffic light turned straight to red I hit my brakes and mumbled under my breath His eyes went a-flying and his orange drink hit his lap And my four-year-old said a four-letter word Started with S, and I was concerned. So 
was a son. Now where'd you learn to talk like that? He should have been watching you. They think that cool. I'm your buckaroo. I want to be like you. And eat all my food. And grow as tall as you are. We got cowboy boots and camel pants. Yeah, we're just alike. Ain't we that? I want to do. Everything you do, I've been watching you. We got no back home and I went to the barn. I bowed my head and I prayed real hard. So Lord, please help me help my stupid self. The next out of bedtime later that night. Turning on my son's scooby doo night light. He crawled out of it and he got down on his knees. He closed his little eyes, folded his little hands. He choked to God like he was talking to a friend. And I said, son, now where'd you learn to pray like that? He said, I've been watching you, that ain't that cool. Eat all my food and grow as tall as you are. We like fixing things out of mama's hands. Yeah, we're just alike, hey, ain't we, Dad? I wanna do everything you do. So I've been watching you. Wrapped him in a hook, the little bear is growing up. And he said, But I'm big, I still know what to do. Cause I've been watching you, that ain't that cool. I'm your buckaroo, I wanna be like you. I eat all my food and grow as tall as you are. Watching you. It's okay to always have a little emotions on Sunday morning, right? <laughs> that idea had popped in my head, and I'm like, well, this is going to be tough on many levels. Um, but it's one that God put in my head, so I followed through. And it's just such a good song when we think about how we are being watched, no matter whether we're the dads or the moms, or maybe we're just a complete stranger. We're being watched on who we are, how we behave. And it is just so good that that, um, that song shares that with us. This morning we are talking about dads, clearly, but it's not just for dads. It's for all different reasons. Um, so even if you're not a dad, please don't tune me out because there's very good things within this message for all of us. Dads and our Heavenly Father is the title that I gave this message. What do you think about both? Contemplate that idea. What words describe your earthly father? Do you feel comfortable addressing God as Father? Why or why not? Sometimes it's hard to relate to God as a heavenly dad or father who unconditionally loves us because your human father may have fallen short in the dad role. When this happens, it's hard to grasp 
how good God is and the love he has for each and every one of us. What do you think of when you hear the word father? It will probably be different for every one of us. Are your mental images positive or negative? How does your experience with your earthly father impact your view of God as your heavenly father? Because it really is important to acknowledge how this works simultaneously. God is a perfect father whom our earthly fathers could learn from and mirror their characteristics. Like I said at opening, Father's Day can be very difficult for many, many reasons, and we know that. Um, but this morning, we just celebrate the men in our lives. And some of us have men in our lives that aren't our dads, but they sure have stepped up to the role, whatever that is. Masculinity overall is a very hot topic these days, and it is actually a minefield. Our families, churches, and our world need men, and we need men of God. These are men that have surrendered to Jesus and the service of others, who make loving husbands, strong fathers, and committed spiritual leaders. What does it take to be a man of God? And when I say man of God, you could place women as well to be strong women of faith. But here's what Dr. Jack Graham wrote a book titled Man of God. And he talks about some characteristics that a man of God would embrace. He says, a man of God would not use their strength to control, but would utilize their strength to lead and serve others. A man of God would not chase ambition at every turn, but would passionately chase what matters most in life. And they would not give into indulgence and temptation. They would give themselves over to the pursuit of holiness. Now, I don't know about you ladies, but hearing that description of an awesome man is like a desirable man. Isn't that what we look for in men? A man of God answers the call to 1 Timothy 6, verses 11 and 12. Guys, if you need to look it up later, feel free. 1 Timothy 6, 11 and 12, which reads, But as for you, O man of God, flee these things, pure righteousness, godliness, faith, love, steadfastness, gentleness. Fight the good fight of the faith. Take hold of the eternal life to which you were called and about which you made the good confession in the presence of many witnesses. Did you know, know that even existed in Scripture? It does. About men of God. Can we all imagine what the world would be like if more dads stepped up to the biblical explanation of a man of God? To be a man of God, we must know who God is. The standard answer is this. God is an infinite, personal, eternal spirit who created the universe by his own power. He is all-knowing, all-powerful, and present everywhere at all times. And he exists eternally and simultaneously as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You got it. Going a little deeper, though, God is God and everything in the universe flows from this truth. In Exodus 3:14, Moses heard from the burning bush. Remember that? And he says, "I am sent you." So God is, I am. God's self-existence. Simply put, if you know that God is and he is the great I am, you understand one of the most fundamental truths in the entire universe. God is, I am, and God is God is. That's who God is. He's your heavenly father and you are his child. God is like a good father. He will guide you. He will lead you. He will protect you. He will shelter you and he will never leave you nor abandon you. That is your heavenly father who God is. We're now reminded of the characteristics of a man of God and also who God is. So let's go on to our next question. 
which is how our earthly fathers and our heavenly fathers alike. And guys, how do you grow your relationship with God? In turn, growing healthy, strong relationships with your earthly fathers and with your children, in your marriages, in your communities. How do we do this? We pray, we talk, we communicate. I guess that's the same there. Um, spend time together. That's very important. Can you grow a relationship if you don't spend time together? No. And the other struggle is, is the fact that if we're not spending time together with our Heavenly Father, are we going to know who He truly is? No. We've heard this saying, a, fa a family that prays together. You guys have heard that too. And it's true. When we pray, especially the Lord's Prayer, how does it start? How does the Lord's Prayer start? Our Father. So when we say our Father, we are automatically saying, I'm your child. You're calling God your Father. Our Father. We are His children. I started this message asking the question, do you feel comfortable addressing God as Father? And that's the reason. You're admitting that you are a child of God's. In Galatians 3, 26 and 27, it reads, So in Christ Jesus, you are all children of God through faith. For all of you who were baptized into Christ have clothed yourselves with Christ. Therefore, we are God's children, so we address God as Father. I've learned that in every family, maybe you guys have noticed this too, that there are rules, they have their own expectations, they have their own uniqueness within that family unit. And they communicate sometimes very differently. Have you ever noticed that about a family? Like you may uh, be new in a marriage or a relationship and you're around your significant other's family and you're like, whoa, they communicate, they talk way different than we do. Right? Those of us that are in long, longer relationships and you're like, oh, yeah, this is just totally normal. And then you go to a friend's house or and something and you're like, oh, this is really loud. It's just that uniqueness of a family. Here's the thing, though. Within that unit, often in today's day and age, children have access to their dads whenever they want for the most part. Even if it is a split family, there's cell phones, but there's times that dads aren't available because of work schedules, or maybe it is custody situations. But the best part is this, and please hear this, because it affects so many. You have a heavenly father that is always, always there for you. Never ever to leave you nor forsake you. So even if your earthly father, like mine, is in heaven, you can still, you still have your father, Abba Father, to talk to. Our God. We say our Father when we pray the Lord's Prayer. We've learned that communication. Children don't need an appointment to talk to their dad. They don't need an appointment to talk to God. We have access to God constantly. Spending time together with God, with your fathers when you can, is priceless. The word father speaks a parental authority. Now I'm going to age myself a little bit here because times have changed in this degree. God is God, you are not God is in charge. He is a father. And as dads or earthly fathers, you are his children. So dads, yes, you have authority over your families. That's scripture. But in our world today, some families or some people say, no, dads don't have any authority, more authority over the family than anybody else. That'll be your battle. I'm just sharing what scripture says. Scripture is, Dads have authority in the household. 
That's how I was also raised. Dads, fathers, are still children of God. So keep that alignment straight. Does this all make sense to y'all? Yeah? Good. Because he is our heavenly father, right? And his ways are our ways, even if they don't always make sense. The same holds true for earthly fathers. Sometimes your dad, if we're Oliver, sometimes your dad will say, no, you don't get to be on the phone, right? Dad knows best in that case. There's a reason for that. And one of the Ten Commandments is what? Honor your, honor your father and your mother. We need to do that. We also need to honor God. Hopefully the dads here today have a characteristic that God has. It's TLC. Anybody know what TLC is? Good job. Tender, loving care. God is a father with tender, loving care. He's kind, he's loving, and he is very, very faithful. In Psalm 103, 13, it reads, Just as a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. This verse speaks of the loyal love of a father and of God's loyal love to his children. God's loyal love to us goes so deep that he sent his one and only son to die for us so that we can have everlasting, eternal life. That is a very loyal, faithful kind of love. It's an everlasting love. Human dads love like God. No matter what, have an everlasting love for your kids. It's so important. Those of you that are a little bit older and wiser, how many times once your parents passed, did you wish you could call them? Right? It's profound. Those of you that have had your, your, loved, your beloved dads pass way too early, it's hard. And that is why it's so important that you know Father God as your God and your Father, not just God who is somewhere out there. Have that personal relationship with him. God is very clear about human fathers and how they should love their children. I hope you've gotten some of this picture. I hope that you accept the challenge to be a man of God, which is in accordance with 1 Timothy 6, 11, and 12. And this holds for all of us. It doesn't just have to be men of God. Let's be steadfast. Let's have love. Let's have faith. Let's have godliness. Let's have gentleness, right? We see all over the place, just be kind, right? Let's do that. That's all part of this 1 Timothy 6, to be kind, to be forgiving. Fight the good fight of the faith. Take hold of the eternal life to which you were called and about which you made the good confession in the presence of many witnesses. That finishes off that scripture. You each, no matter your role in society, you each are a foundation of the home, of, this, of the community. I just read something on Facebook yesterday. I wasn't on hardly at all. And I might not get it right, but I think I did post it. I shared it. About how the mouse saw a mouse trap at the farmer's. And he freaked out because he knew what the mouse trap was going to do. And he went to the cow and the cow said, it's not my problem. How is it going to hurt me? And then he went to the sheep and the sheep said, that's not my problem. It's not going to hurt me. And then he went, to, he went to the chicken first. And the chicken said, that's not my problem. I'm sorry. So he went to three other farm animals and said, I'm freaking out. The mouse trap's in the house. He went back to the, to the house. Um, the wife was failing quickly, so um, went to the hospital, had to pay for gas to get to the hospital, so, and to, no, let me get that out. I told you I was going to mess it up. 
his wife was failing, so people were coming to the house, so the farmer had to kill the chicken to, pay for, to feed the guests. So it did matter, right? And then the wife continued to fail, so the farmer had to um, have a, for the funeral, had to have a gathering, so there went the lamb. And then he had to pay for the funeral, so there went the cow. So did the mouse trap have an impact on everybody? And that's the point. When somebody comes to you and says, I have this problem, I am struggling, something is going on, whatever that is, listen. Scripture tells us to share the heartaches of others, right? Let's be, truly, 1 Timothy 6. Let's be gentle, steadfast, gentle, loving, faithful. God, our Heavenly Father, is very, very faithful. When we're far away, He loves us. When we turn our back on him, he loves us. When we break his law, he loves us. When we do our own thing, maybe stray off the path, he loves us. When we say, leave me alone, we don't want you around anymore, he says, I'm staying right here. Our Heavenly Father loves us. Some of us older parents have heard our children and will never forget this when it happens. When your little people come up to you because they, they didn't get their way or whatever it might have been and it is the worst words we ever hear and it stabs us in the heart. I hate you, right? I think almost every parent has heard that and it crushes us. And we know deep within our souls they don't mean it. We also know that it's because they didn't get their way. But you know what God does to us when, we, when he hears those things? I love you anyway. I love you anyway. So men, do you see the parallel of fatherhood with the heavenly father? Men, are you ready to fight the good fight? in your marriages, in your homes, in your parenting, your jobs, your church, and your communities? That is the call this morning. Stepping up to be a God-pleasing example for others to follow. Everything God is and has is wrapped up in the word Father. He is our Heavenly Father, as it should be with the human fathers as well. In Jesus Christ, we discover the most significant truth of the universe. Our God is a Father who loves us so very, very much that He did something we would never, ever think of doing. I could never give my son up for all of you. I love you all, but I could never do it. He did it. He gave his son up for us because he loves us unconditionally. When God gave his son for us, it proved that he is a father who truly, truly loves his children unconditionally. All that a good earthly father is and will be to his children, God is already to his children. Let that sink in for a second. All that a good earthly father is and will be for his children, God is already for his children. Nothing can separate us from his great deep love. In Jesus we know the most important truth that God is our Father, our Father. And for that, we are very thankful. Amen. This morning, we are very thankful and blessed to be able to partake in the coming to the Lord's table for communion. At Family and Faith, all are invited to take part and to be reminded that what happened the night that they joined in the upper room for the Last Supper. 
Jesus invited his friends to come and share the last meal. He knew what his mission was. And he said, hey, you guys, you won't understand what's going to happen. But you will one day. And he said, come and eat. And each time you eat, please remember me. And he said, do this in remembrance of me. So on that night in the upper room, as the disciples gathered round with Jesus, after he washed their feet, showing them to serve one another, he took the cup, I'm sorry, he took the bread, and he said, this is my body, it resembles my body, but each time you eat, every time you eat, remember me. And he took it and he broke it. And he said, that is for you. And then he took the cup, the cup of the new covenant. And he said, this is my blood shed for you. And each time you drink of it, remember me. And so as they gathered together and they passed the bread and they passed the wine, they took and they ate, remembering what Jesus did for them. And they took and they drank, remembering what Jesus did for them. And so we too will take and eat and drink, remembering what Jesus did for us. And so we invite all to partake in the Lord's Supper this morning. The ushers, please come forward. They will bring the elements to you, and then they will also collect your cups when you are done.
Father God, we thank you this morning for your son going to the cross for each and every one of us. We thank you for inviting us to the Lord's table to truly remember to forgive us because we fall short. And Lord, as we eat, no matter what it may be, as we drink, may we give glory and honor and thanksgiving to you for all, for all good things come from you, Father God. And for that, we are a very grateful people. Thank you for your son, Jesus. Thank you for what he did for us, because you love us so very much. Amen. We're going to stand and close out with a song that many of you know. We're going to invite the young people forward and celebrate Father's Day with Good Good Father. Come on up, young folk. Oh, yeah, I got close in prayer. Yeah. Ooh, I've heard a thousand stories of what they think you're like, but I've heard the tender whisper of love. The dead of night and you tell me that you're pleasing that I'm never alone. You're a good, good father. It's who you are. It's who you are. It's who you are. And I'm loved by you. It's who I am. It's who I am. When I've seen many searching for answers, far and wide, but I know we're all searching for answers. Only you provide, cause you know just what we Say a word, you're a good, good father. It's who you are, it's who you are, it's who you are, and I'm loved by you. It's who I am, it's who I am, it's who I am. I am. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect. are perfect in all of your ways to us. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways to us. It's who you are, it's who you are, 
It's who you are and I'm loved by you. It's who I am. It's who I am. It's who I am. Father God, you truly are perfect in all of your ways. 